Hi. Uh, so today I am in a non-office environment, but this shouldn't stop us from learning uh, viewing transformations in our computer graphics class. Uh, and basically, these transformations are the ones that uh, move the 3D content uh, on your 2D image plane screen. Uh, so this, this set of uh, transformations will be dealt with today. Uh, and I am Susai Lolo, uh, borrowing these slides from my colleague Oz. So if you look at the previous week's action, we talked about modeling transformations, which uh, put our models to the world space, okay? Uh, the models are defined in their own local coordinate system, uh, like uh, the head is above the torso, and these are all in 3D coordinates, but they, these are in the local coordinates of that model, human model in this case. Uh, we want to arrange those models in a scene setting. So we essentially use affine transformations like rotation to orient them, like translation to move them, like scaling to scale them up or down, grow, shrink, reflect them, shear them, etc. So all these affine transformations are done for you to set up a scene in 3D. So they move your local coordinates into the 3D world coordinates. So this is covered last week. Now we will take it from there and those world coordinates, we will play with them uh, and we will move them all the way down to 2D image plane of the camera. So, and we call all these transformations viewing transformations. Last week, the ones we dealt with, we call them modeling transformations. So in the weaving transformations, the set I am talking about is basically threefold. Camera transformation that moves the world coordinate system to the camera coordinate system. So everything is now defined in terms of the camera space. Then we project the 3D camera coordinates, uh, either perspectively or orthographically or there are other methods but we will focus on these two projections and once we do the projections uh, we will then get the 2d point out of those projections and those points will be the actually image plane points that we will see uh, and we call them viewport transformations and in terms of matrices so the world coordinates is just obtained after the modeling transformations so I need to apply the camera transformations, which is the first one, then the perspective or orthographic projection transformations, which is the second one. And finally, I apply the viewport transformations to get 2D XY components out of those W world coordinates. And the Z component is still useful for the ordering, like depth buffer stuff, so Z components is also valuable here. And if you go one step uh, below before, we start with all the way down with the local coordinates, X, L, Y, L, Z, L, for a given 3D point, not the world coordinate. Then you can do your model transformations like the rotations, scaling, uh, translation, all the affine transformations. Uh, and we compose them, as you recall, in homogeneous coordinate system. That's why we have this one, by the way. This makes everything homogeneous. Then you have the world coordinates, and then you can do the following three actions that we will discuss today. Okay, so let's discuss then. Uh, but one before the discussion, I also want to give you another perspective here. So far, the rendering of the 3D models on our 2D image plane was backwards. It is the it is opposite of what humans do actually. That's why we call it backward rendering. This is obtained using ray tracing of our first week actions. Uh, you are the eye sends ray rays to the scene, and do, using the intersections, it pulls back the color of the intersection point to the image plane. So unless you are a superhuman, this is not normal. This is 
supernatural. You don't send rays from the eye. That's why this is backward rendering. From now on, we will now be able to talk about forward rendering, which is the most natural scenario for us. The stuff emits intensities using light, etc., and we project them to the image plane directly forwardly. So we will now today talk about for the forward rendering pipeline. Not all of its steps actually, because the rasterization, like filling the insides of the projected triangles, we will cover it next week. But still, we are now uh, transitioning, making a transition from the backward rendering to the forward rendering in this class. Okay, so let's begin our. I will fill these matrices up for you. Okay, this is the heart of today's class: M Chem, M Per, and M M M V P of the most valuable player, MVP. Okay, so in the camera transformation, uh, this is my word space, by the way. I represent it using the typical X, Y, Z axis that are perpendicular to each other. Now I have a camera around, which is located at this E location. This is the positional vector. And the camera also has uh, directional vectors, U, V, W, that defines its orientation. Like in this case, V is the up vector. So this is my camera is looking, this is the upside of the camera. Uh, and this object, okay, like a cube, it is by default, not by default, actually, after the modeling transformations, it is defined in the X, Y, Z world coordinate system. So my task is to define it in UV W coordinate system. So to uh, see the difference between these two coordinate systems, I assume a point somewhere here, right? So it has a positive X value and X is aligned with U typically. So this same point has a negative U value as you can see from this direction. So obviously these are different coordinate systems I need to align them. I need to make them give me the same uh, output. So to do that, I will actually move my uh, camera coordinate system on top of my existing world, world coordinate system, like this. U aligns with X, V with Y, and W with Z. So if I do that, then my object now has a different coordinates, right? Compare it with this coordinate here. It is way above, now it is like coming down. So it, this is the corner point of the cube in this UVW coordinate uh, frame, coordinate system. And I, on purpose, select this alignment because this is easy to do, uh, actually. All I need to do is first translate the I point to the origin. So I point has E, X, E, Y, E, Z. Uh, e, e, Z uh, components, 3D. Uh, I just need to cancel them out. So I need to apply this translation. And again, to write everything in terms of matrix multiplications, I go to the homogeneous coordinate system. So this is the translation matrix pattern. I put TX, TY, TZ movement to the fourth column with one in the end, as we know from the previous week. So that would be my translation. But I am not done. This is not over yet. I need to do this alignment. And this is easy to do uh, as we studied before. So all you need to do, since I, X, Y, Z is already perpendicular to each other, and so are U, V, W, uh, to align U with X, I just need this rotation matrix where the row is the uh, original UX, UV, UZ directional vector components. Similarly, put the V axis here and W axis here. So once you rotate everything with this matrix, everything uh, will be from here to here. It's, it will, they will have different uh, coordinates that are aligned with the U, V, W, which is already aligned with the X, Y, Z. Yes, okay, so that's it actually. This is called weaving transformation matrix. First the translation, then the, then the rotation. 
So if you like pain, you can even memorize this long version of that. Uh, but I don't recommend that. Just knowing the derivation and the idea is sufficient. You will just need to first move, the, move it and then uh, rotate it. So now I am in this so-called UV, WE coordinate system, or a better name would be camera coordinate system. So I am now in this system, in this coordinate system. Now I am going to my next step, which is the projection transformation. So essentially, I need to uh, do the following. Uh, I need to uh, get the 2D projection out of the 3D points that are currently in the camera coordinate system. So how to do that? I can actually, I have two different approaches. One is the one where the projector is, projector line here is perpendicular to the image plane. Then I have orthographic projection and one, I have this convergence focus point and everything wants to go there and whatever it intersects on the image plane along the way would be your projection. This is called the perspective projection. Um, so this video actually makes a nice animation about those transformations plus oblique transformation, which is like, so in oblique case, it is similar to the orthographic case in that all the projection lines, projectors will be still parallel, but now, there will be some uh, slope. So it, they won't be perpendicular to the image plane. As you can see, the angle between the dashed line and the image plane, it is not 90 degrees. So oblique is also sometimes useful, uh, but in general, we go with these perspective and orthographic ones. Uh, and actually, let's also quickly see the uh, video here. Uh, okay, so if I go to the corresponding YouTube video here, uh, so this will do your projections actually here. Uh, but I am not sure if I am sharing the correct screen, so let's share it again using the browser. Okay, I think now you see uh, the thing. So, in summary, actually, I can summarize this video for you, which is already three minutes, but anyway. So, in the... So, that would be the orthographic case, right? All the projectors are perpendicular to the image plane. So, if you do it for uh, all the points, actually, in this example, you will just get one square, right? That would be the orthographic projection of the 3D cube in the camera coordinate system in the viewing volume. Here, now they are doing the oblique transformation. See, the projectors, projectors are still parallel to each other, but they don't make a 90 degrees with the image plane. That, that is the difference. And so let's see the output of this difference in the image plane. So you can get more information actually with one projection, so you can still have the idea of a cube here in the projected worlds. So, especially in architecture, this may be useful. Uh, and finally, the most popular one would be the perspective projection. Here is your focal point, your convergence point. All the 3D points want to go there. And whatever you intersect on the image plane would be your projected point. So in this example, if you do it for all the points, all the eight vertices of the cube, and then I will connect them in the rasterization, but it is not our current topic. So see, this is the difference. Now we have the perspective projection, uh, which looks like this. Yeah, okay, so that is the actually uh, 3D animation. I want to show you about the in the projection business. Now we can safely return to our set of slides. And we observe, we proceed actually. 
and let's first make this difference between perspective and orthographic projection. So what is going on here? This is the results image plane. So orthographic projection, no matter what your depth is, no matter how you are close to the image plane, all objects will appear at the same scale, which is kind of unrealistic. In the perspective projection, however, they will uh, the, the objects that are far away will be smaller than the ones that are nearby. So I am using more information about depth directly. In this case, I will have a smaller red projection compared to the yellow projection because yellow is closer to the camera, so it should be bigger as we expect in the real world. And the green sphere on the other end is just for a different demonstration. It is about the viewing volume. So anyone outside the viewing volume will be discarded. That's why we put the screen just to demonstrate that. Now let's uh, talk about the map of the uh, projections. Start with the easier one, the less realistic one. But this is still important because the, even the perspective projection will at some point use this information. So this is inevitable. One needs to learn this, to learn about projections. And what I have here is, this is, uh, this is the viewing volume defined by left. Okay, so this rectangular prism, left, right, bottom, top, and near, and far, uh, with respect to the origin of the camera space. So notice that uh, all these are distance quantities, so they are positive, like n is positive. That's why I use a negative n here, because it is actually in the negative side of my uh, coordinate space. And this weaving volume will be converted into canonical weaving volume, where L is mapped to minus one, R is mapped to plus one, bottom is mapped to minus one, top is to plus one, near is to one and far is to one okay so this is a special weaving volume that will make the viewport transformations easy so that's why this is a in important deformation of this random weaving volume into this stable fixed minus one and one based canonical weaving volume and by the way this is not that random actually this is defined like a rectangular prism so you don't expect the sphere here that's why i should take that back it is not random but the numbers are random so l b r t f and these are random numbers they be will become minus one or one just after the canonical viewing volume transformation which is the following which is the following so i need to map uh, l b minus n to minus one minus one minus one and rt minus f to one 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 so if you apply this to your 3d points and your homogeneous points with one as the fourth coordinate you will get what you need but obviously this is not intuitive at all so one way is to just memorize this and just get it over with but i don't recommend that you should at least understand how to derive this in case you need to drive it again in an exam or assignment setting uh, or in general actually it makes sense to understand what is going on so let me talk about this thing then um, so the idea is again i have this x so i am just looking at the x coordinate okay so in, a, in other words i will be looking at this top row because they will be multiplying my uh, x, y, z, and one homogeneous coordinate. So this is my input x, y, z point in the camera coordinate space, by the way, right? Because after the uh, first m cam we studied in like 10 slides ago, I now have the camera coordinates x, y, z. So the first row 
when you apply it, Y and Z will uh, not take any contributions. And I will also get something from this term. So the, that's why I will go with the X coordinate only. So I will try to understand how I obtain this term and this non-zero term. So the idea is simple actually. Your objects looking at the side view, the X coordinate. Uh, so if it is in the center of the L and R, the original viewing volume, left and right, it must be in the center of this minus one, the orange canonical view volume. That is obvious. So if it is closer to the left, it should be closer to the minus one and so on. So there is some proportion. So what would that proportion be linearly? It would be for the following. This distance, which is X minus L, over the whole distance, which is R minus L, must be equal to the projected or the new, uh, yeah, the projected, we can say that, projected coordinate X prime, this orange distance, which would be X, which would be X prime minus minus one, so plus one, over one minus minus one, two. Okay, so now let's uh, try to get X prime out of this equation to show you things clearly. So what would that look like actually? Uh, so I think safest way would be to write them again, but I will use capital L to uh, distinguish it from one as I also do once like this. Okay, so let's rewrite this like that. R minus, for some reason R is still lower case so this is a terrible notation but anyway uh, so th that x prime and i will also use plus one here as i have two minuses over uh, over two this is very basic in the denominator here. so let's rewrite this in this clear space uh, so i would have two x minus two left equal to what so if i hit here with x prime only i would have x prime r uh, minus x prime l minus x prime l again i am in a non-office environment so this is as primitive as it gets i guess but anyway so x prime is done now one hitting these two r minus l plus R obviously right plus R minus L yeah so let's leave X prime alone it would be this right X prime parentheses right minus L uh, left is equal to so I have two X here on the left minus l but this will go as a plus l so i have minus one l and i have minus r right yeah so x prime would be this thing over r minus l so this is the x prime i need to get uh, out of this matrix multiplication so let's quickly verify this so the denominator is very optimistic r minus l r minus l yes wonderful and as far as the numerator goes two times x which is here wonderful then minus r and minus l they will be multiplied by one only which is the homogeneous coordinate so minus l minus r minus l minus l whatever the same thing so i have that thing so that is the reason i have this huge matrix but all the non-zero non entries are very uh, meaningful, as you can see. And similarly, you can drive the Y prime and Z prime. Okay, so that would be my orthographic projection uh, that transforms everything in this uh, normal weaving volume, VV, into this canonical weaving volume, CVV, right? So. That is covered, hopefully. Now I will, so this also covers the orthographic projection. So that is it actually for orthographic projection. I am already inside this canonical box. So 
all the three points here after this transformation it will be uh, in this box that runs from minus ones to plus ones. So for the perspective projection, uh, I have this weaving volume that is shaped automatically as you project all the near plane to the focus point and similar the far plane to the focus point. And this near plane will be the interesting plane. Actually, everything will be formed in this plane. We also call it image plane. Uh, so yeah, so then in the perspective case, the outline is the following. So this weird weaving volume, I will again deform it, like apply more pressure to the back, uh, like and less pressure to the front and like play it with a Play-Doh. Uh, and then it will come to this new uh, weaving volume, which has this rectangular prism shape. And then from here, I will go to the canonical weaving volume, which I already know how to do, okay? So we already know how to do this step. So all you have to do is actually to define any arbitrary point in this space, define it in terms of this space. Okay, so because as you apply pressure here, this will also move it back a little bit. Everything will be pressurized. <clears throat> so think of it as compressing a box, this box, where you have to apply more pressure at the back. Uh, so now let me show you that pressure with more mathematical uh, terms. So this is the side view here. I am again focusing on only one component, the uh, height here. So that would be my near plane. This is the far plane, the dashed lines. Again, the side cross section I am looking at. So consequently, this is the top point. Oh, oh, and this is near, and no this is far, this is far. So this, uh, okay. point <clears throat> uh, okay. x y z yeah. it uh, so actually yeah. okay I am trying to understand the new y component okay for this point uh, and because as as you uh, already realized I am making this I am applying pressure, like I am making it go down. Uh, so I am going to this canonical weaving uh, volume ready version, not the canonical volume, but I am going to this rectangular prism. So I need to uh, get this Y prime coordinates. <clears throat> so how to do that? That would be a simple triangle similarity actually. This thing, or we go this way, right? Y prime over the original Y, whatever it is, is going to be equal to this distance, which is N minus N actually, over this whole this distance, which is the Z coordinate of this point. Okay, so this point is basically going to this point. And since I am looking at the cross section, the X doesn't change. This is, I'm just focusing on the height issue. That's why you will see only the, y prime changing yeah so that would give you this equation actually if you multiply both sides by y y prime is this uh, and the y prime would be this and similarly if you look at a different uh, cross section you will get the x prime by this so now again i will talk about z prime later uh, so essentially, if I use this matrix, it will help me a lot. So let's see how it helps me. Given the X, Y, Z camera coordinate system point, uh, if you multiply it with this special matrix, I will already get X prime equal to NX, right? Because all the zeros will cancel the others. And Y prime equal to NY. And there is also the Z prime, which will be covered later. So remember, I need to get this for my X prime and get this for my Y prime, because I just obtained that from the triangle equality here, similarity here, sorry. Uh, so 
And I can just do that by dividing all the terms here with uh, minus z, which would give me one homogeneous coordinate here, and it will affect the others as such. Yes, so then uh, actually that would be uh, the uh, matrix then with n here uh, uh, and that only leaves me the handling of the z coordinates, the z prime. So it will look like the following. We can, uh, so what is the a and b that defines my new z prime? So I will use this little uh, information. So if you look at this original volume and this special weaving volume, L or the N, it still is N, it doesn't change. So I compress it from like top and bottom, but I don't move it left and right. So that's why the location of the left and right image planes are the same. So I have that minus N should be preserved as well as minus F. So then remember this thing. So again, where is this coming from? It is coming from here. Z prime is this minus A minus B over Z, minus A minus B over Z. Uh, and if you plug minus N, the output, and you need to get this with the minus N inputs. So it will make a plus here then. Similarly, this minus F will be obtained with minus F as input here. So if you combine them, you have two equations and two unknowns. You can easily solve for A and B, which are the unknowns which would be this. Then you just plug it here as for A and B. And then this, this will be your uh, perspective to orthographic projection matrix. First you apply it, and then you apply orthographic to canonical weaving volume transformation matrix, which we have already studied. So if we put everything together again, you have this ugly matrix that is kind of unintuitive to explain. But if you go with this version, like we first studied the orthographic projection matrix that puts you from weaving volume to canonical weaving volume. So that would uh, be uh, the first matrix we studied. Then you will hit it with this matrix, which are uh, less easier to memorize or you can even drive it as we just drive here uh, and that would be your output matrix so now after all these actions we are uh, in in this canonical weaving volume no matter how you come here if even if you do perspective projection you will land here or you do orthographic projection you will still land here and this is a special place because everything runs from minus ones to plus ones. So it would be very easy to map them to 2D coordinates as following. You can do it as following. So this is my viewport, uh, the stuff on the screen. So zero, zero would be the center of this pixel, which has a length of one. So that's why this is like starting from minus 0 0.5. Then this would be the zero. So with, with that in mind, the minus one you already have after your uh, projection matrix actions, it should map to minus 0 0.5, which would be this exact location. Then same goes for the right-hand side. And this goes for Y as well. And as far as the Z value, there is no Z value here. This is a 2D viewport, but this is still a very important information. Uh, so I need to convert this into, 0, 1 value. So these zero ones are very important because it will be used in our depth buffer to decide who is in front of who. Okay, so then this transformation, putting uh, minus one to minus 0 0.5. And actually for the first coordinate, it goes like this and so on. Uh, yeah, so that would be your projection matrix, viewport projection matrix. Uh, and, okay, so let's finally talk about the Z buffer or depth buffer. So these zero ones, which 
will be mapped. So you are basically squeezing this interval of size two into an interval of size one. So you are obviously taking some halves. So this matrix can also be derived easily. And now, so what to do with the Z buffer? Actually, it is for the decision and fast and quick and robust decision of who is in front of who for the visibility problem. Uh, so two points may map to the same pixel. Then you will look at their mapped Z coordinate and the one who has a higher Z coordinate uh, will be preserved because it will be closer to you. Uh, Eclipse, the smaller Z value will be preserved. It will be closer to you. So one uh, and the Z buffer value is in zero one interval and it's in the viewport coordinates just like the x and y's uh, and not in the word coordinates uh, so one alternative rendering could be the following that we don't recommend you can render the triangle in 3d then do all the projections of all those rendered 3d points but this is not a good idea because a tri triangle in 3D can be very big, and after all these transformations, it can be outside of your canonical viewing volume, which means it won't be rendered at all. So then all those uh, filling in 3D just goes to waste. Okay, so that's why I don't uh, fill up the triangle in 3D. So we will uh, just do it in 2D later using rasterization. Also, the long 3D triangle can be very small after the projections in the viewport into the viewport so then again it's most of the work you have done to fill all this long triangle would be going to waste that's why you just uh, just uh, project uh, to the three vertices of a given triangle from all the way down all the way down from uh, the camera coordinate space to the viewport space so it will project maybe like this and then you will fill it up inside in 2d using rasterization okay so that is the next topic of this forward rendering pipeline actually but this week i hope that this these points in camera coordinate system how they go to the viewport coordinate system and actually, we have also seen uh, a model. So everything begins in word coordinate system, actually. And with model view transformations, they come here. Yes. So these are the, this is, by the way, a quick summary of the last two weeks. And as far as the Z buffer goes, there's one little issue called Z fighting, a cool term. So this is about the following. So after all, you are squeezing all this big range into this range of size one, zero one. So let's see how they look like with different ranges. So if your 3D points, they go from 10 to 50, then you can maybe safely map them to zero one with uniform distribution. But when this interval becomes larger, your output range will still be the same. So there will be squeezing. And in practice, they will lead to the projection the same. Uh, they will give you the same Z value. So when it comes to the visibility check, uh, you will have to make a random decision because you will have exactly the same Z viewport coordinate. So maybe you have observed this when you rotate something. Uh, and if they exactly come to the same projected viewport point sometimes green comes up sometimes red it is all because you just do it arbitrarily because all the information you have is it's saying that they are just exactly at the same z location in 3d so uh, uh, problem is even worse if the input z values are already very close in the first place so yeah that's why to avoid that fighting, we recommend you uh, keep the depth range uh, 
as small as possible. Uh, so that will uh, minimize the damage during the compression into zero one interval. And in summary, we have this world coordinate after the model wave transformations of the previous week. And using the first camera transformation and then the uh, first uh, projection transformation and then the viewport transformation, we get this uh, viewport coordinates in 2D. And the third viewport coordinate is still extremely useful for visibility test in your Z-buffer. And uh, if you also want to include the previous week to our discussion, everything actually begins with the local coordinate system, which is like you have a human body model. Uh, the head is above the torso and the legs are below the torso. So locally you can say it like with higher Y value for the head and smaller Y value for the food part. So these are all local coordinates. Then you build up your scene by translating those coordinates into a 3D scene. And not just translating, but you can also orient them, scale them, etc. So that would be your modeling transformations. And once you apply them, you now have your world coordinates. And then you can do these three transformations we discussed today. Uh, that would be the end of our session. Uh, I hope that uh, this part is clear. Uh, and uh, we can stop here, actually.